Man. Will play host to a group of young men hoping to make history of their own. These are the faces that will represent the United States in the ring. This 106 pounder from Duncanville, Texas struck Pan American gold last year and lives by the motto, mind over matter. And as soon as my feet touch the ground, that's, that's when I'm all in play. At 17, he punched his way to world bronze. Now this 20-year-old from Maryland wants to outsmart opponents and capture Olympic gold. I view myself as a boxer puncher, so I want to be able to box, get inside and mix it up. I want to be able to do everything. With the greatest of boxing surnames, this 132-pounder looks to continue the great heritage of Brooklyn, New York fighters. Whatever your weakness is, I can figure it out by the first round. And he's a 22-year-old heavyweight from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, whose sole motivation is giving his daughter the life she deserves. Because I was so determined, I was like, whatever it takes, I'm going to be dedicated to it. Today, they host the world in an Olympic tune-up while the place holding the answers to their dreams awaits their arrival. NBC Sports, in association with USA Boxing, presents the Olympic Invitational. We welcome you to Bridgeport, Connecticut. The arena at Harbor Yard. Bob Popo along with Teddy Atlas. The United States has qualified nine for the 2008 Olympic Games. One young man is coming back for a second try. What she won. He was only 17 the first try. Now he thinks that added maturity will lead to gold. First up will be light flyweight Luis Yanez, and he is backstage with Jim Gray. Luis, what is it that you will try and accomplish tonight in the exhibition? I want to accomplish my second win. I came out of four straight losses after my last fight, and I'm trying to become a win and make a statement through here and now in Beijing. Mm -hmm. You do 600 push-ups, 600 sit-ups a day. Did you do that today, or will you wait till after your fight? Nah, I will wait after my fight. I don't want to you know, get, get tight before my fight, but I'm ready to go. You got all the guys in here, the entire team. What do you do to stay loose, to get relaxed, to get into the swing of things before you go out and get into the ring? I like to listen to my music, listen to James Brown, you know, just like to get in the groove. I got my team. It's like my family. You know, we're all stick together, and we're ready to go in there as a team. All right, Luis, best of luck. Thank you very much. Well, Luis has a lot of energy, and he is going to put that on display. A great smile and a lot of power. Luis Yanez coming up next. Boxing Olympic Invitational is brought to you by USA Boxing, home of America's best athletes and the 2008 Olympic boxing team. And by Jordan, become legendary. Luis Yanez first up for Team USA, the 19-year-old from Duncanville, Texas. He's only 19, but he's one of the more experienced fighters on his team. He won a gold in the 2000 Pan Am. Actually, he has a win over his opponent today. That's Paulo Carvalho, who will represent Brazil in Beijing. Referee is Joe Sanchez. In Olympic-style boxing, there are four two-minute rounds. This can be competed in the light flyweight division, 106 pounds. Yanez in the blue, Carvalho in the red. Olympic-style boxing. Judges are seated ringside with a computer pad, white portion of the gloves must make contact with the front of the head or the upper torso and the force behind the shoulder must be used in order for a scoring blow to count very important difference when it comes to olympic style boxing as you can see Yanas is a southpaw and like a lot of his american teammates keeps that right hand awfully low depends on his speed and his distance to get it off before his opponent can close that gap bob Yanez has moved out to a one nothing lead. Misses with the straight left, trying to get his jab going. Carvalho in attack mode. Yanez smothers him. So, Yanez landed a decent body shot in Olympic-style boxing. Teddy, that is one of the punches as Yanez scores moving away that tends to get overlooked. Body shots. It is. It's a funny thing. You want somebody fundamentally to go downstairs to the body to slow down an opponent, but it's not credited, as you said. And another thing in Olympic-style boxing, the clock counts up. 
Carvalho Come just on, missed with a right man. hand. You yeah. can see Yanez likes to counter, Bob, and he has very fast hands like a lot of the Americans do. He has a funny habit, too. Watch when he throws that left hand, the power hand, for a southpaw where he can turn into it. When he brings it back, he brings it back extra high, almost like he's reloading a little bit. Picks it up over the head. Careful with that straight left. Rounds are two minutes in length. Yanez of the United States with a good straight left hand. See that left hand just a moment ago? He threw that left hand, you said, straight. But then he brought it back, almost like he was displaying it, bringing it up high over his ear. That's a habit he could pay a price for, if not today, later on in the Olympics. In the final seconds of the round, referee Joe Sanchez noticed some loose headgear, so they'll get that squared up and finish the final seconds of round number one. Nice combination by Yanez. You can see the mindset of Yanez looking for those counters all the time. So a good first round for Luis Yanez. National Golden Gloves champ last year. We'll listen to Coach Daniel Campbell. He, when he come in, bait him, bait him, bait him. He's behind by two. So when, he, so when he's got to come in, you got to throw three and four punch combination and just build on it, build on it, build on it, all right? Just build on it this round. We'll go after him in the third round, okay, sir? Right here, you can see the counter right hook from the southpaw Yanez. He likes to get a little lead and then counter with that punch. Right here, you see he pause, Bob, with that jab, trying to set up a little bit of a lead from his opponent so he can do what he did there, counter. Good first round, though, for Luis Yanez. We asked Coach Campbell to give us the keys to the medal for Yanez. Aggressive attack, use angles, and throw a lot of punches. Be busy. At 106 pounds in this weight class, you have to be busy. And you have to be fast. And Yanez, he does have that gift of speed. a little bit more aggressive as Carvalho comes forward, but it's Yanez who scores. Carvalho trying to push his punches out. Yanez trying to take advantage of the aggression like of Carvalho. That. Again, he picking him up as like he that. comes in. And he'll do that countering Yanez will with either starting with the straight left or the counter right hook. And the right hook's a favorite punch for southpaws. Hard for an orthodox fighter like Carvalho to see that punch coming from that angle. Yanez says one of his greatest strengths as a boxer is to use his mind. Catch him coming in. But right now he's using his mind, waiting for a lead. And when he doesn't get the lead, he sees Cavallo lay back, then he gets off first. Right now the feet are starting to get a little wide of Yanez. And Cavallo stepped in and scored, but Yanez answers back with a point of his own. Good left hand and then a right by Yanez. And a standing eight count being given to Carvalho. Three standing eight counts in one round or four total in the fight. And the referee will stop the fight. Even though neither one of these little guys are big power punches, you can see the power hand for Yanez, the left hand for the southpaw, where you can turn that body, the leg, into that punch. And there it is again, scoring another eight count. Now, you do not, unlike professional boxing, get additional points for scoring an eight count. It's done for safety measures. But obviously, the punch that causes that eight count registers on the scorecard. Yanez puts his hands together with a combination and a very good round number two for Luis Yanez. We had a chance to ask Yanez what motivates him as a fighter. I'm not a losing person. I'm a winning person out there. I have, it's just I have a lot of courage. You know, uh, a lot of people back at home support me so much, my family, and that just means so much to me. And, and every time I'm in that ring, I think about them. And I think about everybody else to support me, my team yelling at me. That's all I think about, and it's just so inspiring. I just want to go out there and, and make everybody happy, and I, and I just can't see myself lose. Well, that confidence, Bob, has translated itself into four U.S. national championships for the young Yanez. 
He had a very good round number two, Teddy. He was able to kind of stay in the pocket. And he registered two standing eight counts in round number two. We are underway round number three. Paulo Carvalho of Brazil. Luis Yanez of the United States. 106 pounds. Four two-minute rounds. He's looking for the hook. Again, you can see with Yanez, his first thought is to counter. His second thought, if you're waiting on him too long, then he'll do that. He'll start to take little steps forward. Wide right hand from Yanez, but Carvalho could not make a pay for it. He hooked to the body by Carvalho of Brazil. You see a little wasted hand movement, little subtle thing that Yanez does. Watch how he touches his face, his hands moving up and down, unnecessary movement, an opportunity for Cavallo while he's busy doing that to get off. trying to get a rhythm. Carvalho jumps in with a left-right combination. Again, you see that extra hand movement of Yanez touching his face a little bit, giving little chances for the fighter in red to be busy. Don't worry about the crowd. Three punches, Yanez. Here, Coach Campbell say three punches, Yanez. Nice counter combination by Yanez. Whips a right hand to the headgear. Again, that right hook. Terrific punch for a southpaw against an orthodox fighter. And a wonderful straight left hand by Yanez that caught Carvalho flush. Right. Referee Sanchez admonishing Carvalho for not listening to his break command. You know, you live by the counter, you can get hurt by the counter sometimes. Janez likes to pull out with that counter right hook. It's been effective for him, but sometimes he falls out. And when he falls out, he can put himself in a position where his opponent can catch him. Good round three for Luis Janez. Still to come, we'll get a look at Gary Russell. He's in the locker room with Jim Gray. Gary, you've had both of your hands broken before, and they've been a problem. And in international bouts, you're not as allowed to use as much gauze and, and as much protection. How much of a problem are your hands for you? Um, right now, they're pretty good. I ain't have a problem out of them in a, in a while now. So right now, we're just trying to focus on winning these fights and making it happen. Is it something that concerns you, though? Is it always on your mind? Nah, the more you, the more you think about it, the less focused you is on your fights. What are you trying to accomplish in these exhibitions? Oh, I'm making a statement. This is my last amateur fight in the United States, so I got to make it happen. We, we got to make a statement, you know what I'm saying? I'm sending a message to everybody from Brazil to Puerto Rico to China to any other country there is out there. Come to games. It's going down. They need to get about uh, 54 kilos mm -hmm. and do something else. <laughs> and you also said this fight's going to end in three rounds. You made a prediction tonight. Um... Like I say, that, that's what I want to have. I'm trying to make it, get this fight over with in three, but depending on what my father and my coach to say, that's how that's going to go. Gary referred to 54 kilos. He will compete at 119 pounds in the Olympics. His bout tonight will be at 125 pounds as we begin round four for Luis Yanez and Paulo Carvalho. You can see again right away, Yanez pushes that jab out sometimes, like a range finder, <laughs> trying to set up a lead again of Cavallo so he can count him. Cavallo <laughs> trying to rip that right hand, but missing the scoring area. Looks like Yanez knowing he's ahead a little bit, starting to load up on big shots, trying to find one big payday. Maybe leaving himself a little bit open while he's doing that. Counter left hand by Yanez. Nets him a point. <laughs> On 
long jab from Carvalho. The right hand by Carvalho found the chin of Yanez. And there's that extra hand movement you see, Bob, of, of Yanez, up and down, not really serving any purpose, maybe a purpose helping his opponent get off while he's busy. Carvalho hit on the break. And he's being penalized. A point. They don't take away a point from Carvalho. They'll add a point for Yanez. Looks like Yanez got a little out of rhythm, a little out of sync this round. Came out loading up, knew he was ahead. And he's having trouble getting back to that speed rhythm he had going for him. That combination rhythm he had going. And as I said earlier, when you see that extra hand movement of Yanez, it does not serve him. It serves his opponent to get off while those hands are unnecessarily moving. So Luis Yanez, pretty impressive, but he made that fight harder than he needed to be. Coach said he made it a little harder than he needed to be. Well, right there, you can see why the coach would say that. Yanez looking to load up on an uppercut, and by loading up, he left himself open and available to a right hand from Cavallo. We have a decision, and the winner from the blue corner, from Duncansville, Texas, Luis Yanez. Yanez. So Luis Yanez, impressive in victory. Gary Russell Jr. of Capitol Heights, Maryland, going through his preparations. He's coming up next. <laughs> Time to take a look back at USA Boxing history. Montreal, 1976. Maryland native Sugar Ray Leonard captured a gold medal in impressive fashion, capturing the hearts of American boxing fans. Can Gary Russell Jr. of Capitol Heights, Maryland, follow in those same footsteps? He's 20 years of age. Teddy's had to deal with a lot of injuries, though, over the last two years. Yes, hand injuries mostly, and one of the problems in the amateurs, funny thing, you touched on it in the early about, they worry about safety, yet they cut back the amount of gauze that you can wear in your hands, therefore sometimes safety not there for the hands. It's the first competition for Gary Russell Jr. since the World Championships. Robson Fonseisau is his opponent. He will be representing Brazil in the Olympic Games. This is not the normal weight class for Gary Russell Jr. 125 pounds at the Olympics. He'll compete at 119 pounds. And as I said earlier, you can see many of the American fighters fight out of that southpaw style stance. And most of them, fast hands. Gary Russell is one of them. Well, that is very important with the computerized score. And once again, it's got to be a punch used with the force of the shoulder. The white portion of the gloves must hit the target area, the front of the head, the front of the torso, with the force of the shoulder behind it. There are three judges here seated at ringside with a computer pad. Two of the three judges must register that scoring blow within a one-second time frame for that punch to count. At the Olympics, there'll be five judges seated ringside. And like a lot of his teammates, Russell also keeps that right hand down low, down around the hip. He has a funny habit, too. He'll keep it down low, and then as he gets close, he'll pick it up high to throw it. Then he'll bring it down, then he'll bring it up. Sometimes that extra movement maybe can give an opponent a tenth of a second to get there first. But there's so much extra speed, so much raw speed with Gary Russell, he gets away with it. And again, like a lot of his American teammates, Bob, as I mentioned earlier, you could see first thing in the mind of Russell, he's looking to counter. He is looking to take advantage of a mistake from his opponent, and then he's going to come with quick counters. Right hand by Russell, he hooks to the body, then a straight left hand. 
but none of those punches registered. A continuing problem with amateur boxing quite often. Our eyes tell us that a punch should register, and we don't see it. Very impressive round number one, though, for Gary Russell Jr. We had a chance to ask Gary about what motivated him to get involved in boxing in the first place. I always wanted to fight. I guess it was genetics or something. It was in my blood. It was something fun. It was something I wanted to do. I always enjoyed contact. Anything that had something to do with physical contact, I loved. I liked it. Well, he had to like the contact in round number one as he gets instruction from Herb Martin, one of the coaches. And Teddy, good work by Gary Russell Jr. You can see the fast hands. Not all of them landing right there, but you could see the little slip to the side and a quick counter with the left hand by Russell. Round number two underway. As Gary Russell Jr., a 7-0 lead here in the early parts of round number two. Watch that lead right hand for Russell. He drop it down around his leg as he does, and then he picks it up. Then he drops it, then he picks it up. While he's going up and down, Right now, his Brazilian opponent is going forward. Well, Conceição finally got on the board here in round number two. It's 8-2 in favor of Gary Russell Jr. And then he pushes down Conceição. And the referee is Marcella Patricia Paula de Sousa from Brazil. I noticed one thing about this Brazilian team, Pop. They're not the most developed fighters technically. Very awkward, very unorthodox. But all of them seem to be lanky, wiry, and long arms. And it's very difficult to get a gauge for the Americans on the length of those arms because their hands are down. So it's hard to tell where the punch starts and where the safety point is. Seisau got tripped. That was not a scoring blow that knocked him down. Teddy, you referenced the Brazilian body type for their fighters. And that is very similar to the Cuban fighters. Yeah, wiry, although they don't keep their hands down. Not both hands, maybe the lead hand, the way the Brazilians do. And again, you can see those hands down, and the Brazilians depend on controlling range for defense and using those long arms. They use the legs to step out a little bit and make you reach a little bit. And what's very disconcerting for the American fighters is with their hands down, again, you don't get a good gauge on where the safety place is when you're outside the range and where the danger zone is. And you can see right now, Russell a little confused about that range. And that's why he's being a little bit careful, a little tentative, waiting for something to come to him. With that said, Gary Russell Jr. comfortably in front at the end of round number two. Getting some instructions from the referee, but Gary Russell Jr. in control of the scheduled four-rounder. Back in Bridgeport, Connecticut, Bob Hoppe along with Teddy Atlas and Jim Gray. USA Boxing presents the Olympic Invitational. Gary Russell Jr. of the United States in the blue. Ropes in Conceição of Brazil in the red. Good right hand to the body by Russell Jr. Well, you see the two looks of Russell now. And both of them with that hand speed. He can press forward, he can walk you down in that power mode with his hands up. And that's what he's trying to do right now. Or he can step back and counter. Keep your eye on the scoreboard as well. If a boxer has a 20-point margin within the first three rounds of the bout, the referee will stop the contest, outclassed, outscores. Kind of like that old mercy rule in the Little League, baseball. You remember that years ago. You were, you were the benefactor of that a couple times, weren't you? Your teams? I played so long ago they didn't have those politically correct rules. <laughs> <laughs> Another good shot to the body by Gary Russell Jr. A little combination there from Conceição. And again, you see those two looks I talked about with Russell. Sometimes he keeps that right hand down around his hip. Now he's keeping it up in that punching chamber, more conventional. Hey! It's a 
16 point edge. Remember, two minute rounds. I don't know if Russell means this, Bob, but in a way, he's being a little bit of a, giving himself a lie detector test in a way. He's telling his opponent when he's going to counter and when he's going to press. When the hand's down, he's going to counter. He's going to lay back, like right now. When the hand is up, then he's going to look to be aggressive and start to walk forward. Wild right hand from Kutsesa. Russell makes those right hands miss by stepping out or slipping to his left. Gary Russell Jr. comfortably in front, though, as we hit the end of the third round. Still to come, heavyweight Deontay Wilder from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. He's waiting in the locker room. Let's send it back to Jim Gray. Deontay. Time to wake up, you gotta fight. You ready? Yeah, I'm, I'm more than ready, you know. Um, <laughs> what are you listening to there? Um, I'm listening to gospel. Um, this is um, Kirk Franklin, more than I can bear, you know. Um, gospel relaxes my mind. So you resting or relaxing? Are you sleeping or are you preparing? I'm, you know, all, all of the above. <laughs> you know, all of the above. So, you know, like I said, it, it relaxes my mind, make me focus and concentrate more. So you can rarely find a person to listen to gospel, and, you know, to prepare for a fight. So, you know, I'm, I'm one of the special ones. So. <laughs> I've done literally hundreds of championship boxing events and bouts. I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever seen anybody in the locker room just moments before their fight this relaxed. Where does yeah, that come from? I mean, I mean I'm a southern guy so I'm, you know I'm I'm baby we relax. We you know we're more like down other people who just laid back basically, you know. So and I'm one of those guys who just laid back just ready. So when it's time to get crunk up, I can crank it up, you know. So it's almost time. So get your rest and we'll see you after the fight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Back out to you, Bob. <laughs> All right, Chip Teddy, have you ever had a fighter that relaxed? Yeah, actually, it's not really common, but I know a fighter years ago that I had the pleasure of working with, one of the great fighters of all time, Alfredo Benitez. He used to sleep in the dressing room before a fight. It was his way of escaping the pressure, nature's way of getting away from the fear. Look forward to seeing Deontay Wilder coming up. Right now, Gary Russell Jr. in the blue, comfortably in front of... Robson Conceição of Brazil. Conceição will represent Brazil in the Olympic Games. Russell will fight at 119 pounds. This bout being contested at 125. You know, I talk about how the Brazilian fight is not real developed technically. Now you see those long arms and the unorthodox, very awkward style. But a lot of times also, they don't use their height. They will walk in, as you can see right here, and give up that height. And right there, you can see a good example of it as Conceição walks right in, gives up that wingspan. Gary Russell Jr. being cautioned for holding. Oh, look at that, Conceição sticking his tongue out at Gary Russell Jr. Well, between the length, the long arms, the unorthodox approach, you can see Conceição, he's trying to really intimidate, or if not intimidate, but definitely frustrate Russell. Well, I would think the scoreboard right now would be frustrating Conceição. As he is down by 15 points. Well, that's part of his hope, maybe, Conceição, hoping to get Russell a little bit frustrated, maybe walk in with something where he could catch him as he just did right there with a left hook. Hey. Somehow Gary Russell Jr. though got the point. Yeah, well that's the problem. Again, we talked about it before. You're supposed to have three judges pushing a button within a second of each other and maybe they need to practice more Nintendo because their fingers are not fast enough. With that said, Gary Russell Jr. has been fast enough as he is out pointing Conceição, who shows him his tongue again. Twice Conceição has taunted Gary Russell Jr. And here you see on the replay, Russell is in the pocket he wants to be. He's a shorter man, he's in close, and he's letting those fast hands go. And here's what you talked about, Bob. Probably some more punches would have suited Conceição better than two tongue lashes. And your winner from the blue corner, from Capitol Heights, Maryland, Gary. Russell Jr.
Gary Russell Jr. victorious. We will hear from Gary when we come back. Plus, we'll take a look at some highlights from Saddam Ali out of Brooklyn, New York. He's warming up, ready to take center stage on the Olympic Invitational. The 2007 World Championships netted a pair of gold for the United States. Rasheed Warren will be going to his second consecutive Olympic Games. Brought home the gold for the United States. And welterweight Demetrius Andre. Very impressive with powerful punches in capturing gold for the United States. As we get a look at the nine weight classes that the United States has qualified for the Olympic Games. Gary Russell Jr., one of them, he's with Jim Gray. Gary, congratulations. How annoyed were you with Kansei Sao that he stuck his tongue out at the end of that fight there at you? It's all good. Um, like I say, that goes to let me show that he was a little under the weather. You know what I mean? <laughs> Why didn't you sit down tonight? My wind felt good. I was in shape from working out of Colorado Springs. You know what I'm saying? The altitude and everything was just so high. So once I came down here, I wasn't tired. I didn't feel fatigued. Um, a lot of pain in my shoulder. I got a torn tendon, you know, so... You got 55 days to get it well before Beijing. Is it going to be a problem? Not at all. Um, in Colorado Springs, we had the best doctors in the world. So I'm going to let them work on me and prepare me as best way they can. Gary, congratulations. We'll see you in Beijing. Thanks, man. I'll be glad to see you there. Well, obviously, some concern for the U.S. coaches with that tendon problem in the shoulder of Gary Russell, Jr. Time for a... USA Boxing flashback, Rome 1960. He was known as Cassius Clay at the time. Muhammad Ali working his magic in capturing an Olympic gold medal. Saddam Ali, 19 years of age, out of Brooklyn, New York. Getting set to take on Everton Lopez of Brazil. We asked Saddam Ali about his drive to being an Olympic team member. This is very big, you know. A lot of people want to be in this spot, in this position. And here I am here, and it took a lot of hard work. Anybody could do it, you know, no matter what race you are. You know, if you have the talent, you know what I'm saying, if you work hard for it, then you could do it. And I'm here, yeah, I'm Arab American. I could do it, and I would like to show that. Today we look at the action in round number one, late stages of round number one, and so far Ali They've done a pretty good job up 2 nothing against Lopez. Yeah, you can see the difference in hand speed from his American teammates, the lighter guys. They're a little quicker than Ali, but Ali's more conventional. Right now, he's in that aggressive mode. He's right in front of you. And I guess you could say that in some ways, a little one-dimensional. You know he's coming in that front door. But when you got to throw straight punches, Saddam, straight punches, all right? Right down the middle. Aim him down here toward his chest because he's pulling back and trying to get up under him, okay? Pick up the action in round oh. number two, and this is where it kind of turns around as Lopez is able to kind of stick and move and score and catch Ali with a nice combination. Ali not dealing well with movement and not coming in behind his jab and getting picked off and almost made his coach Campbell swallow his toothpick. Lopez would come away with a 17-12 victory. Go, man, go, 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 A fired up U.S. Olympic team under the guidance of CEO Jim Millman of USA Boxing. He's standing by with Jim Gray. Jim, you've qualified nine of 11 categories in the weight classes for the Beijing Olympics. You have two world championships. How would you assess America's chances for USA Boxing over in Beijing? Jim, we're really excited about the uh, opportunity ahead. Uh, our team is in the uh, best condition and best world ranking that we've been in the past 10 years. And I think we have three, four, five excellent medal opportunities in China. What's caused this resurgence? Why is the team better than it's been in the past? A key part of it has been the uh, full-time resident program uh, in Colorado Springs at the Olympic Training Center, where the entire team lives full-time, trains full-time. So when the alarm rings in the morning, it's nothing but boxing all day. And I think that's a real key to the success. Jim, best of luck. We'll see you in Beijing.
The alarm rings early for Deontay Wilder from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. He works two jobs to support his daughter, and he trains full-time. He takes center stage next. Your flight attendants will be... A lifetime of sex. The first time ever, it's the U.S. Open Championship in prime time. Don't miss golf's best compete on one of golf's greatest stages. The U.S. Open Championship coming up next on NBC from Torrey Pines. Get a look at United States heavyweight Deontay Wilder out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Ready to take center stage in this heavyweight showdown. One of the least experienced of the U.S. fighters. Coach Campbell's keys to medal for Deontay Wilder. Set up those power punches. He'll be squaring off against China's Najini Yushan, who will represent China in the Olympic Games. So Wilder, who was sleeping earlier, hopefully he is awoken enough to take care of business, Teddy. Well, you want to make sure that the fight obviously is warmed up. It's one thing sleeping hour or two before the fight, but when it gets within 45 minutes or so, obviously you want to warm up, and motion relieves tension, so you want to get that tension out by moving at that point. Wilder is really motivated on many levels. He has two jobs that he uses to support not only himself, but his two-year-old daughter, Naia. She was born with spina bifida. She's undergone several surgeries at the Children's Hospital in Birmingham. A tremendous maturity level out of Wilder as he continues this quest for an Olympic gold medal. And you know, he's going to need all that incentive, and he's going to need all the help in those areas that you alluded to as far as maturity and things like that. He's the least experienced on the team, only about 25 bouts. That's extraordinary when you think that most of the fighters internationally and the U.S. team have upwards of 150, 200 amateur fights. Good first minute of round number one for Wilder. He has a 4-1 lead over Yushan. You see some of that experience lacking there in the form of Wilder. Technically not as developed as his teammates. You can see he falls in when he throws his punches and his head leans forward. And when he does that, Bob, that can be very dangerous with an opponent looking to throw an uppercut. You start to fall in with your head like that, you lose eye contact with what you need to see. Under 30 seconds to go in round number one. Wilder with a 5-1 lead over Yushan. You can see sometimes why somebody might make a connection to his name Wilder and his style. Every once in a while, Wilder will swing a little wild with that right hand as you see proof of it right there. But he's comfortably in front near the end of round number one. He's got a 5-1 lead over you, Sean. We asked Deontay about the number one motivation in his life. My little girl, man, you know, because she was born with spina bifida, you know, and, and you know, the doctor said that she wouldn't be able to do a multiple amount of things throughout her life. You know, they said she wouldn't be able to walk. She wouldn't be able to have an average child uh, ability of learning and stuff. And it was incredible to see all the things that they said she wasn't going to do is just she knocked them out, knocked them out. It's like a strike, strike them out. And, you know, I was like, I like she got to get that fighting from me. I'm going to be the, still be the best father I can be to this little girl. I'm going to provide anything and everything she needs. A very emotional Deontay Wilder. He just lights up when he talks about his daughter. And a very good round number one against the Jiati Yushan of China. You know, I talked about earlier, Bob, of how Wilder lacks some of the technical development of his teammates and even other international fighters. He started late, only about 25 bouts. And in the heavyweights, you can get away with it a little bit because you depend more on size and power. And you can erase some of the mistakes of technique with power. 
And there tends to be a limited field when you get to the heavyweight, so there will be some walkovers. It's a smaller pool. That's a good point. Now, you shot. Good start here to round number two. He has narrowed the gap, and he has tied this bout up at five apiece. I think that Yushan would do a good job of choosing or well, going into that repertoire of punches and trying to pull out an uppercut, a left uppercut, because again, you could see that Wilder, he really leans over to his right side when he jabs. He gets a little top heavy. Wilder with a two point lead, and down goes Yushan. Yushan is hurt. The right hand missed, but the left hook did not. And referee Mike Rosario has stopped the bout. Referee stops contest here in round number two. We'll hear from Deontay Wilder when we return to the Olympic Invitational. The USA Boxing Olympic Invitational has been brought to you by USA Boxing, home of America's best athletes in the 2008 Olympic boxing team. And by Jordan, become legendary. Today we take a look at the finishing left hand by Deontay Wilder. You know, the funny thing here, watch, his lack of technique serves him because usually you want those punches to come in concert, in rhythm. Watch here, after the right hand, there's a little delay, and then the left hook. And that actually served to set up the Chinese fighter. Let's send it over to Jim Gray with Deontay Wilder. Deontay, congratulations. How pleased were you because he was coming back in the second round before you uncorked that left hand and you were being pressed a little bit. Well, so it's got to please you that you were able to knock him out after you were under a little bit of pressure. Right, right. Um, at first, I got a little excited. I started throwing these haymakers and bombs and stuff because, uh, you know, I knew he was going to come or whatever. I can just see it in the eyes, the intensity that he wanted to just come and knock me out just because I was at home. You know, he's a visitor or whatever. And I, I see him putting the pressure. My, my coach was telling me to calm down. Calm down, Deontay. Calm down. Set him up. It's there. So once I started doing I calmed down just a little bit once I start doing that you know I see openness for me it's start uh, basically it's all about who wanted the most in there you know I'm gonna bring my dog game regardless so you know I, whoever wanted the most come out with the win so you know I want the most come out with the especially in Bridgeport Connecticut you know represent you know you know what the fight's over you can take your mouthpiece out congratulations <laughs> thank you <laughs> back to you Bob <laughs> All right, Jim, a great look at the team the United States will be sending to Beijing. We got to see youth, speed, punches and bunches, and even a little power. And some smiles along the way as well. Coming up next, golf's best compete on one of the game's greatest stages, the U.S. Open Championship, next on NBC. For Teddy Atlas and Jim Gray, I'm Bob Papa. You've been watching USA Boxing Olympic Invitational on NBC.